So in my previous video, I talked about many things. You remember at the end of the video, I actually talked about the collapse of the U.S. dollar and the introduction of a CBDC digital U.S. dollar currency that is going to come out of the collapse of the current U.S. dollar. And this is all being done by design. You, you see the globalists of the world, the World Economic Forum, the UN, the Bilderberg Group, the CFR, Tri Trilateral Commission, all of these sort of globalist entities that do not have any allegiance to the United States, but just so happen to control mainly the Democratic Party and so much of the Republican Party as well here in the US, they want a certain global society and they want America sort of integrated into this and they want the collapse of the U.S. global empire. They want the collapse of the U.S. as a superpower, as a unipolar superpower power controlling half the world and also having a very, very strong U.S. dollar because a lot of people don't know this, but there's something called the United States dollar reserve currency. We, we have the world reserve currency. What that means is there's been since the Bretton Woods Agreement after World War II, an agreement amongst all industrialized nations that they would use U.S. dollars to purchase oil to fuel their economies because oil is needed, obviously, to fuel the entire planet, the economy in every way. I mean, it's, it's so obviously uh, important. This created a unipolar type of world where the, the United States was the global superpower for the most part. I mean, you did have the Cold War with the USSR, but you know what? That whole thing was pretty much a charade, like for the most part. It, it was kind of a charade. So, you know, you had a lot of entities within Soviet Russia, you know, within communism that also controlled so much of capitalism and uh, the Americas. Just look at the origins of the Bolsheviks and all of this. So that being said, now this is coming to a head and the U.S. world reserve currency, having the U.S. dollar as the world petrodollar, that is becoming a thing of the past. And I don't think most Americans understand how this is going to affect them. This is extremely dramatic. Uh, I, I don't think this can be overstated how bad this is for the U.S. standard of living for most Americans and really for the West in general, because a lot of these countries saying that, hey, we're going to dump the dollar as the U.S. world reserve currency. A lot of these countries aren't necessarily Western countries. These are countries like Russia, China, Saudi Arabia. And of course, Russia's the first to step in line here now because we're kind of at war with them. I mean, whether or not we, we want to really admit that is kind of the case. You know, the United States and NATO are open, openly giving weapons to the Ukrainians fighting the Russians in Ukraine. So, I mean, you know, it's kind of like a proxy war and it's, it looks like it's probably going to heat up into a real hot war with tactical nukes, you know, on the battlefield and stuff like this. Um, luckily, I don't think that's going to, you know, lead to a nuclear annihilation, but I do think you will see tactical nukes use in this uh, increase uh, in, in, you know, uh, intensity. So right now, though, we're already going to see the effects of what's happening. This is the breaking news here. Russia to seek payment in rubles for gas sales from unfriendly countries. What this is effectively saying, first of all, is that so much of Europe, including Germany mainly, buys almost all of their energy, their natural gas, etc., from Russia. Russia is a main exporter in the whole world, is like the main exporter of natural gas, of so many different resources, oil, obviously, all of these things. And the fact that they're going to basically say, go screw to anybody who doesn't have rubles, tells you that they are switching from the U.S. having the world reserve currency to, well, them, you know, trading in their own currency. And this is going to devalue the dollar even more. We're already seeing record inflation. The highest inflation in 40 plus years, and really, realistically, if you use uh, the real standards instead of like the fake, uh, wh what do they call it, the uh, consumer price index standards, CPI standards, if you if you use the real CPI standards to, to determine inflation of the US dollar, it's actually much higher. It's probably the highest it's ever been in history, ever. I mean, just, I mean anybody can tell you that. If you look at what's happening at the gas pump, what's happening at the grocery store, I talked about this in my previous video at nauseum, but let's just talk about this because this is the breaking news. So many of these countries that get energy from Russia are Western countries. Germany gets 70% of its natural gas. That is the main source that powers its economy. 
70% they get from Russia and they're the main hub of Europe. So that's a huge, huge blow. Okay. That's basically what it's saying is all of Europe now has to convert their, their money to rubles uh, to, to purchase their energy. How are they going to even you know keep their homes warm or do anything without doing that? And that's going to decrease demand for the US dollar. It used to be dollars. You understand? So the demand goes down, which means the price of, of the US dollar is going to go down, which means inflation even more. Okay. It's going, it's called exponential. It's, it, well, it's just called the, the you know, exponential. It's, it, that's what it is. So that being said, let's look at this. Now, this is the really interesting part. And we're, I mean, we got so much to talk about. It's crazy, but this is the really interesting part. Russia just said that they're open to selling natural gas for Bitcoin. Now, this is where you can sort of benefit from this. You see, I love making these videos and telling people something that will actually maybe benefit them. Look, I'm not a financial advisor, but I see something like this. And you're already seeing the price of Bitcoin and crypto. I'm, you know, I've been into crypto since like 2013. So I know what I'm talking about when it comes to specifically the cryptocurrency sphere. Actually, more than I do geopolitics, probably. But anyway, the whole point is like the demand for Bitcoin will likely go up because what will happen is some of these countries might refuse to convert into rubles. Some of these Western countries might refuse to convert into rubles to trade for their energy as a sort of a middle finger to Russia, but maybe, and I, this is what I foresee, maybe you can get both countries, well, well both I guess empires, the Russians and the Europeans, uh, and even the Americans, obviously, to convert it into Bitcoin before making a transaction. Why? Because nobody, as far as we know, uh, well, I mean, the, the blockchain is extremely transparent. You can see it is decentralized. Nobody controls Bitcoin. So there's no one country that controls the transactions of Bitcoin. Now, in the future, there could be a 51% attack and, you know, if enough is bought up. But if the market cap of the entire crypto space, of the entire network of Bitcoin grows large enough in a decentralized way, I think it's safe to say it can become a safe haven for everybody to, to play fairly or to uh, not uh, have a, uh, what do you call it, a uh, conflict of interest in terms of converting their currency, especially in times of war. When this war escalates into what could be like a tactical nuclear war, which I think it, the writing's on the wall, that's going to happen. You know, that doesn't mean like nukes hitting New York City. That means nukes in the battlefield, small nukes. And then obviously in collaboration with all kinds of missiles and armies and, you know, tanks and all, you know, Air Force, blah, blah, you know, ghost of Kiev, fake news, whatever. So all of that combined. And then the trade war is just going to entail all of that as well. Bitcoin, I think, might be the, 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 uh, fair playing field, so to speak, that these countries will turn to in desperation because like it or not, these countries kind of need each other in a way. And I'm going to go over how this is all organized at the very top anyway, how it's, you know, we have a situation called the new world order sort of pulling the strings in all these countries to create a World War III type scenario, to create order out of chaos, just like out of World War II, creating a new world order at that time with the US dollar as the world reserve currency. Out of World War III, you will see a new world order with CBDCs and possibly a world reserve asset or currency. I don't know if it's going to be Bitcoin. Bitcoin more just might be sort of a digital gold where it's kind of like not necessarily a currency per se, but and what I, what do I mean by that? That you know, both you know, both sides of this whole thing and or all sides uh, of this uh economic war this world war three scenario are being controlled by the same globalist entities that will create the new world order out of the chaos what do i mean by that i mean the same people who uh do a lot of these deals these globalist deals with guys like putin and russia are the same ones that control the biden administration and uh first of all let's talk about what the Biden administration said. I talked about this ad nauseum in my previous video. Biden takes big step toward government backed digital currency. This is a CBDC, a central bank digital currency. This will be based somewhat on techno techno crypto um principles and is but but it's going to be 
centralized and de instead of decentralized. That's the main aspect of it. I talk more about it in my previous video with um, this whole Hamilton project, this uh, sort of think tank out of MIT and the Boston Federal Reserve to create this United States digital dollar, CBDC. And I'll talk, I talk about that more in the previous video I posted toward the end of the video. Um, that being said, look, these guys all are on the same team at the very top. Now, there are conflicting interests at the same time. You got to understand, like, this is what I don't like. People see the world in black and white, right? There are some people that will say, like, oh, there's no such thing as a great reset new world order, even though it's open. You know, the World Economic Forum literally has a page, multiple pages dedicated to their great reset. They want a great reset. You know, we've talked, we've heard Trudeau talk about a Trudeau talk about the great reset. Many of these, um, politicians, you know, have the same slogans as, is the world economic forum build back better. Um, you know, they want a new world order, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, I could go on forever talking about that. Um, I mean, Klaus Schwab literally wrote a book called COVID-19, the great reset. He is the cha the chairman of the World Economic Forum. He's a globalist, openly. He wants a world government. I mean, I, I don't know what else to tell you. So this is um, all well known. Now, some people think, though, that, you know, this is not a uh, real thing for some. I mean, even though you could just look it up, it's all out in the open. And they'll say that, you know, Russia and the United States have totally separate conflicting um, plans for the world or, or at least um, influences uh, behind them pulling the sp strings. You know, there's no overlap there. There's no um, puppet master sort of controlling both. But then there'll be other people who think that it's like 13 guys in a smoky, smoke-filled room, room all worshiping Satan, uh, you know, planning exactly every script and word that Putin says or every script and word that Biden says at the same time. Uh, and, you know, they literally control like 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 clones robots like they, they think like the world leaders are robots or something and they're all like you know shape-shifting reptilians from mars right so so the, you know it, it can go both ways but i think it's it's kind of somewhere in the middle and you know this is the truth this is the truth it's somewhere in the middle in other words they all have the same idea of eventually becoming a new world order but there's disagreements in how that, or there's disagreements in the contract of what that will mean for them as leaders, for their bureaucracies that are under them and their people, right? And some of these politicians don't care about their people, but some do. I think Putin genuinely cares about the Russian people. Biden doesn't give a shit about the American people. So, so th this, there's a big stark difference there, but you got to understand that doesn't mean Putin's not on board with the Great Reset, guys. Look at this. Out of the World Economic Forum, Russia joined center, center for the Fourth Industrial Revolution Network. That's the World Economic Forum sort of, it's sort of another word for the Great Reset, the Fourth Industrial Revolution, where they want to merge man with machine, where, you know, it's about, you know, uh, Emerging biology with with uh, with technology with nanobots and all I mean all different kinds of technologies you know putting putting a chip in your brain and stuff like this so you know this is sort of like a grand part of their grand vision for the future and obviously depopulation is part of that both through you know very stark drastic means like you know um, poisoning everybody but uh, slow kill poisoning of course like not like instant, but, you know, put, putting cancerous things in the food and water that kill you over time, you know, putting cancerous and harmful things and other things that I can't say on YouTube, uh, that, you know, people are conned into getting by, by people that they're supposed to trust. Right. Um, so, you know, things like that, uh, you know, but there's also the depopulation of just like, you know, having abortion clinics everywhere and just discouraging people to have children, um, over time that will lower the population. Uh, so, so, you know, there's multiple facets to this new world order, but the fourth industrial revolution is a huge part of it. And Russia's on board with it. Russia's on board with the great reset with the world economic forum. I mean, it's well known. Um, you can see here all these photos with Klaus Schwab meeting directly with Vladimir Putin. Look guys, 
they control both sides. That doesn't mean, though, that Putin is is fully on board with everything because he might have his own kind of plans. You know, I do think Putin is kind of like more of a uh, he, he thinks this whole woke culture that the West is, is obsessed with, or at least some people in the West are obsessed with, not guys like me. But so much of Western culture, I mean, just look at the average corporation, the average Hollywood production. I mean, it's so embedded in our culture. Just look at ESPN sports. You know, this woke ideology, this uh, cult uh, of, of, I don't even, I don't even, I mean, how, how do you even describe it? It's like, I don't even know. But, you know, this cult of like woke, um, I don't think necessarily Putin's on board with that. So there's some disagreements here, but... In the end, they all want the New World Order Great Reset, and they're all on board. And in the end, you got guys above them, or at least rubbing elbows with them. Someone like Klaus Schwab, who rubs elbows with Trudeau, who r- r- rubs elbows with, obviously, Joe Biden and that administration. Biden has plenty of World Economic Forum people in his administration, uh, Trudeau, etc. But also Putin. Putin does too. Putin is in the center for the fourth industrial revolution. Putin rub, rubs elbows with Klaus Schwab. So, you know, there are guys playing people off against each other. There are globalists at the very top getting what they want out of this. And by the way, Biden taking a big step toward government-backed digital currency, all the other countries are doing this too. They're called CBDCs. This is what they do, right? They take things that average humans, creative people that are geniuses invent that are usually good for humanity, something like decentralized blockchain technology. I mean, decentralized blockchain technology is the most revolutionary invention since the printing press. If you understand it properly, you will know what I mean when that when I say that. Some people might hear that and they say, what is this guy talking about? What do you mean? How, how do you figure that? Like, you just don't get it, bro. Like, research, research it, okay? So, um, that being said, what do they do? They take it and they invert it and pervert it like a typical Satanist does. They take something wholesome or or something, a genius, I should say, you know, created by just regular humans, um, and they invert it, you see? And they make it so it uh, is a tool for slavery, a tool for conning people. A tool for total control. So that's what they're. What, that's what CBDCs are. And by the way, the World Economic Forum at their previous Davos conference, I think it was the 2021 Davos, the main topic was CBDCs and cryptocurrency. That was the main topic by far. Just look it up. So that being said, this is where all of the, this is going. With Russia... Telling their enemies that they must pay up in rubles or Bitcoin. They said rubles, but they said they're they're weighing whether or not they're going to also accept Bitcoin and gold, which I'm sure they will. Um, with that being the case, and them being on board with some of the the you know WEF stuff and and Biden being on board with the same thing and the printing of money and the collapse of the US dollar it's all done by design guys right it's for the collapse of pretty much all digital currencies or i'm sorry all uh currencies regular currencies fiat into digital cbdc total control so That being said, what else is happening that points toward that? The Saudis aren't answering Biden's calls because they have a new ally. Who's that ally? China. Saudis consider using Chinese yuan for oil purchases. Isn't that convenient? Because China already has a CBDC in their digital yuan. Hmm. Notice how these countries... All moving away from the U.S. dollar. All seemingly done by design. You think the Saudis aren't on board with the World Economic Forum agenda? You think the Saudis aren't on board with the Great Reset? They're highly involved with the Great Reset. You know, they had that AI conference with the Sophie robot speaking a few years back. 
Yeah, that's the fourth industrial revolution. The, the bionic android named Sophie. Is it Sophie or Sophia? Forget. But just look at the video. You know, she's up there on stage speaking in Saudi Arabia at this AI conference where all the globalists and world leaders are there. You know, we're all, they're all like, they, they, the, okay, AI is like their antichrist, right? That is, that is their coming antichrist. I, I actually have a theory that that might be the beast, right? In the world, uh, the uh, book of Revelations or the antichrist himself. I, actually, the antichrist is supposed to be a man, but the, the, the beast, right? And if you have the mark of the beast, you have, you know, the brain chip attached to the, the beast system, right? The AI. So, that's just a theory. That, that's 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 getting into the uh, the more esoteric type stuff. Um, yeah, so you know, it's really really interesting that this all seems to be happening, and I think this is going to escalate. How you can benefit from this is two things. I think Bitcoin might be a neutral haven for countries that are at war for them to still trade in some capacity. So in other words, Russia exports so much to power its economy that they can't stop exporting. So in other words, they're, they're telling like Europe and the Western nations that they have to convert to rubles. They can't use US dollars anymore to buy their natural gas and oil. So a lot of these Western countries, what do I see them doing? Do I see them saying, go screw, we'll find our oil somewhere else? No, because that takes too long. Um, they can do it, like the US and stuff and, and Europe can figure out other ways to get oil. But you know, to actually prepare for something like that, it will take a few years and people will suffer and they, their, country, their countries won't be able to sustain, sustain themselves in the meantime. So they're going to have to keep doing business with Russia. But will they be willing to convert? two rubles instead of US dollars to actually buy that natural gas that they need to power their countries in Europe, uh, I don't think they will. I, I don't think maybe they won't budge. So instead, what they'll say is, look, we're not going to convert to your rubles. We're at war with you. You know, you're invading Ukraine and we don't like that. So, but what we will do, because you don't benefit as much from this, is we'll convert it to Bitcoin. And we're not going to really benefit either because neither of our countries has a major stake in Bitcoin because Bitcoin is decentralized and isn't necessarily controlled by anybody, right? It's just like a decentralized protocol, like up in the ether. So that might be a good negotiation tool for countries at war where it's like they kind of need each other, but they still hate each other enough to not convert the currency that each other wants them to convert to. So they do it to Bitcoin because it's more neutral or gold. But Bitcoin's 10 times more easier to transport because you just click a button. Whereas gold, you literally have to ship it over in cargo, which takes months or fly it or I don't even know. And then you can shoot that down and lose all the gold. You know, all, Bitcoin's much safer, much quicker. It takes like a millisecond and, and you know, it's just so much more secure. So I think that's what will happen. And I think the price of Bitcoin is absolutely going to skyrocket in the next year. Um, like through the roof, I think it'll hit 100K by middle of 2023, the latest. Um, and might be a good investment. I'm not a financial advisor, but uh, you know, you know me, I have Bitcoin. I have other cryptos too. The other cryptos too are really good. Just great technology. As long as they're decentralized and transparent, uh, I pretty much think it's good. Um, you know, sometimes you'll get things that are, you, you got to do your research though, because some yeah, I, I'm not going to get too much into crypto, but some projects claim to be those things, but they're not. So that being said, if you want to support my work, I have Patreon in the description box below so you can contribute. I also have crypto addresses you can contribute to if you want to, to help support the channel. But also giving this video a good thumbs up and sharing it is very, very helpful too. And drop a comment below and let me know what you think. Also follow me on Gab and Twitter where I'm posting pretty much all the time. And join my Telegram group. I keep forgetting we have fun in there posting all kinds of funny stuff. It's uh, t.me slash resisting the reset, I think it is. Um, let me see. Yeah. 
t.me slash resisting the reset. Yeah. Yeah, that's about it. So yeah, let me know what you think. It's been Press. Keep your head up, stay real, and no fear.